right now. A power outage at Randwater's Akinoff plant left large parts of Johannesburg without electricity. That issue has seemingly been resolved, but now various areas in the north and south are experiencing shortages. Let's go to ENCA's Bule Lichwiti Jones, who has more for us, and he joins us now live. Bule, uh, just give us a picture of how it looks uh, out there. This outage uh, started yesterday. It's been about 24 hours since. Has anything improved? Well, I've just received a couple of messages uh, from ward councillors as well saying in other areas um, there has been water that's been restored, but in other areas like, uh, you know, Krugerstorp, CBD, uh, I've been to, uh, of course, also in Asia and other parts of um, Kajiso as well, the water hasn't been restored and, of course, uh, vast areas remain without running water. Um, and this has been a concern even before City Power announced um, that issues at the Aiken of Plant would um, affect the water supply to various areas as well. Um, City Power also saying that they are trying by all means to restore the power to ensure that it does not affect the kind of water operations that are necessary because it's important that you know residents uh, keep hydrated, that they practice uh, normal and of course accurate hygiene practices currently because we find ourselves in a middle of an environment whereby we're in the middle of a cholera um, outbreak as well so it will be important um, for residents to try and pra practice those hygiene measures to ensure that they are not affected with the cholera um, incidences as well or diseases um, I speak to the residents now in Krukusdorf who are just gonna chat to us and vent about their frustrations as well mr. George thank you very much for chatting to us uh, uh, this morning how is this affecting you, the issue of water not being in your resident, in yeah. your area? Yeah, Mr. Pule, this really affects us because of each and every morning when we wake up, so we don't have water, we have to take our children to school. So you just just wonder taking uh, your kids to school without bathing. Even myself, you know, I'm in a, a, a stylist wherever I'm going to work with people. Uh, how am I going to go into people being an, an hygienic, mm. you know, and there's a lot of corella. We need the water, you know, to wash our hands. We can't, we can't because of, you know, we don't have water. Mm. How so? How can we live without water mm. in our area, you know? Taking my kids to, 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 to a school where he didn't bath, you know, it, 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 it had so bad, mm. you know. Eh? I've got a business whereby last week on Friday, I couldn't run my business because there was no water the whole day. Mm. So really, this is, this is not good for us. Thank you very much, Mr. George. Um, Lynette, chat to us um, in your community as well. How is this affecting you guys? Well, starting with the kids, there's a lot of kids everywhere, obviously. If there's no water, firstly, we can't bathe them. We can't flush the toilets. We can't wash their hands. And even if you wash the hands, you, there's always a concern, is the water clean enough? Is the water good enough? Because every second day, you hear, no, there's a burst pipe, there's a burst pipe, there's a burst pipe. And it, it's very difficult because even in the evenings, you can't cook. You can't bathe your children. You can't flush the toilets. And it, it, it's getting to us as residents because even with when you have a little baby you have to like boil water and make a bottle if there's no water how can you make a bottle for them and how long does the water you know uh, how is it the outage sometimes how long do they persist sometimes, for sometimes it goes for days maybe a day maybe two days and sometimes there's three days but it, it gets difficult especially when you do have small children I mean I've got small children and to make food in the evening you kind of need water to cook <laughs> most of the time Definitely. thank you very much Lynette, for you. speaking to us uh, councillor those are the issues that have been raised by the residents here um, and their issues about the cholera outbreak residents want to remain uh, practicing these hygiene practices as well um, Lynette has a toddler at home she can't sometimes boil water or you know bathe children this is an issue good afternoon Pule, and thank you nice seeing you again yes it is a it's a multitude of issues the water and i do want to use the word crisis because it is and i can see it nationwide um, the residents uh, see constantly in whatsapp groups communications to me by email phone calls of water outages the constant pipe bursts and when we try to look at it when we came into power in 2021 the problem was old infrastructure again we sit with that in in Mahali city Infrastructure is failing. We're sitting with pipes that were laid between 1950 and the 1970s, cement asbestos pipes. That's what's in the ground here right now. So what we did is we tried to bring in a system, a contract, which we did successfully to rejuvenate the water reticulation system. Now we're sitting with that contract has subsequently been stopped. And we realized this. Why is the new 
leadership not realizing that the infrastructure needs to be replaced and nothing's going to change for instance in december we had 13 between 13 and 18 burst pipes just in this ward 20 the cbd in mohali city which is shocking and now we sit with issues of um trying to get them the pipes replaced and resolved but when we said no there's no budget uh we try and do other projects there's no budget because of all the spending costs in replacing pipes where it will just take a simple project to get these old pipes rejuvenated so again it's neglected infrastructure and now who suffers at the end of the day the community and like residents are saying like you can say what george said with the cholera it's an irony the government's telling us to wash our hands bath hygiene keep clean yet there's no water and I said it earlier, it's a multitude of issues. So this is the one issue. The other issue is that Eichenhof is constantly breaking at Rand Water. It is every day we got that little letter from Rand Water. Yeah. Eichenhof, there's been a the generators failed, etc., yeah. or it's load shedding. They can't push the cubic volume of water through, and we sit with no water. Our reservoirs can't be topped up. I just want to want you to step aside. I want uh, my colleague Noko to show the residents what's going on here. I see there's a truck that's been there now. It seems as though various operations are taking place. But explain to the viewer what's going on here. Okay, so this was another case of a pipe burst, which is kind of a norm in my ward. I came out, I saw the pipe burst, the teams, the officials from Mokhali City were on site, they were busy with the repair. While they were busy with the repair, I noticed the, the, the pole standing there, the light pole at the end of the street, yeah. was so badly rusted at the bottom and cable had been stolen and damaged that that pole now stands a risk of falling over, which are then subsequently reported to the electrical department. Mm -hmm. So right now over there, the pipe is not being fixed. That is another issue, the electrical issue that I discovered being fixed and repaired. And until that's done, the pipe can be repaired and then water can be restored. Just lastly, before I let you go, the issue of communication as well. How's that? Are you happy with the communication? Residents, some, some residents are saying, look, we cannot go on social media. We, don't, we have load shedding. So communication is down as well from Randwater or City Power or City or Joburg Water. How's the communication? Okay, it depends on what communication you're talking about. Talking yeah. about social media reporting. So Just about the reports around the water outages yeah, is, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, that issue with the communication, so when there's a pipe burst or there's no water or low water pressure in a ward, the residents need to contact Mukhali City. They become very frustrated as they cannot get through to the emergency lines or the WhatsApp group. They, they're then forced to contact councillors and ask councillors to please try and escalate it. And then councillors are then trying to contact the departments to attend. So it always has to be an escalation. It can never just be a simple thing of a service delivery of the resident who has the right to say, this is the issue in my street or my ward, please can you assist, and they come out. It always has to get to a point where a community is angry, frustrated, and having to come out and fight with ward councillors to then come out to resolve issues and then get it. So the communication is poor mm. at best. Clearly it is a big problem. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Trump, councillor in Ward 20 here. Krugerslof, CBD, Masiko, also one of those that have been affected um, as a result of the icon of plant, um, you know, experiencing numerous challenges. The residents are quite, you know, frustrated you know George speaks about one resident who speaks about how we are in the midst of a, uh, the cholera outbreak and they need to keep you know uh, practicing hygiene measures to ensure that they're safe his business also is affected I spoke to one of the, the residents here Lynette as well says that you know bathing is a problem cooking is a problem so you can imagine the you know vast challenges residents are experiencing here